All right, welcome to Bereans at the Gate. It is November 10th, 2017. As always, it seems there are many, many things to talk about. Uh, yesterday, the Washington Post published a story on Roy Moore. If you don't know who Roy Moore is, he's the uh, Republican Senate candidate uh, in Alabama. He's presumptively going to win that seat. Alabama is a heavily Republican state. Uh, he does have a challenger, but uh, allegations have emerged that uh, former Judge Moore behaved improperly with teenage girls uh, back in the 1970s when he was uh, a prosecutor in Alabama, if I'm not mistaken, and mm -hmm. his uh, early to mid-30s with girls who were all, all the way from, I think, 18 down to, to 14, 14, 14. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So social media was exploding last night on this issue. Um, regular media is exploding on this issue. He's a, a Christian conservative in some ways. He sort of... Uh, we have to talk about it, I think, because of all these issues. So I'm curious what you guys just think in general. Um, what's your take on it, and how should we move forward in discussing Roy Moore? And Mark, you want to start? Okay, well, I, I, the, the stories have some plausibility to them so because they've been pretty well researched, verified. There's a good deal of reliability, at least yeah. as far as we can see. Yeah. Now, we still don't know positively, and I want, I want more evidence to come out. So I think and the level of plausibility, there is plausibility. Uh, now, however, I, I want to make my distinction I made before, and that is um, there's a difference between the moral issues and the cultural issues, too, here. Uh, morally, if he did what he did regarding the 14-year-old, that's, well, that would be, Ill that would have been illegal, it would have been. immoral, yep. mm -hmm. as well as culturally wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. All three. Right. Let's go up the, up the scale to the 18-year-old. Yeah. That might be culturally frowned upon in some circles. Right. But it wasn't immoral or illegal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this, this seems the news media is lumping all these together. And I want to be careful about separating them out and then determining whether the story is true at this point. Jeff, what do you think? Well, it's just really hard. I mean, when you think about 40-year-old allegations. Absolutely. They come yeah. out at, at the last minute. I, I, I suggest that uh, because of the length of time that his supporters... Uh, will likely not weigh that very heavily because they, uh, I think there's already a significant amount of discounting of what media does and the, the, the veracity of allegations, especially older allegations like this, will not necessarily be received as being truthful. So yeah. we've kind of poisoned the well with the public discourse such that yeah. even if it is legitimate, I, I, I'm skeptical whether it's going to have much effect. Uh, I, I think the, from a, a cultural Christian perspective, we should not be upset that uh, conservative Christians are going to be held to a higher standard, and they should be. Yeah. So, so I yeah. have no problems with that. I, I do have a concern that uh, perhaps some people that will be going after Judge Roy Moore on this issue will judge the charges because of what his, his other political beliefs are yeah. and so forth. Yeah. Not just because yeah. it's conservative yeah. Christian, because right. there's a lot of kind of yeah. uh, untoward beliefs, yeah. and, and I think we have to be careful of that. Yeah. Uh, but so, so, you know, I have no idea about the... Uh, the uh, the veracity or not, but if it is true, he's he has denied it. I understand. Yes, so he yes, has yeah, denied yeah, it vehemently, strongly. Uh, so <laughs> since he's denied it vigorously now, and if it is true, then yeah, he's a liar right now. And we right. who cares? In one sense, who cares about forty years ago? Because he's lying to us today in in trying to get a job today. And I think that ought to be certainly part of the process as well. That would mean he should not be worthy yeah, of our yeah, vote. Exactly. Now it might. There's no statute. The statute of limitations is oh, long yeah, run out, exactly. so there'll be yeah. no prosecution. Right. But we still we still should hold him morally accountable for what he did that was immoral and or illegal at the time. You guys, I think you guys read National Review online to some extent, mm -hmm. is that right? Yeah. Jonah Goldberg had a post yesterday where essentially he argued, Republicans, don't even waste your time defending Roy Moore. Let him go the way of the dodo. Let him <laughs> dangle. Um, if we lose the seat, we lose the seat. In the end, it's better to sort of pick your battles wisely and not fight yeah. for someone like Roy yeah. Moore. And so... Uh, yeah, I have a lot of sympathy with that argument in some ways. Roy Moore is not exactly my definition of, of an upstanding Senate candidate. Uh, he has, shall we say, an interesting relationship with the law throughout his career. Um, he's been forcibly removed from the bench yes. in Alabama two times because of his unwillingness to abide by federal rulings. And so uh, I don't see him as a good exemplar in some mm -hmm. ways. And so like Jeff said, though, for me, it's hard to keep those things separate from looking at this case because I... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, he's certainly not my um, my ideal of what a senator should look like or should act like or should uh, revere when it comes to his legal standings. But then again, I think we should give him the benefit of the doubt to some extent because this is such a tough case. Yeah. Um, uh, well, just one quick comment. I don't know if you guys saw. One of his defenders in Alabama 
said, uh, we shouldn't think anything of this because after all in the Bible, uh, Joseph and Mary, yes. <laughs> Joseph was an adult and Mary was a teenager and they became the parents of Jesus, he said. And that was his uh, rationale for why we should ex excuse Roy. Kind Mary. of a non sequitur there. Yeah, can, you, can you explain uh, why? I think it's self-evident. Well, I, yeah, I yeah. think God has God appointed that for one thing. Right. When it's, it's in special revelation. For another thing, this would have been commonplace in that culture. Right. And for another thing, there was nothing that took place before the marriage. Right. Nothing. Yeah, if right? you, if you believe nothing. in the virgin birth, we, yeah. <laughs> Joseph was not plying Mary with wine. I mean, it's just it's a totally different yeah. world. Very so. different. Yeah, I, let me let me do say this though. Yes, this is true confessions time. Now, <laughs> I am fourteen years older than my wife. But she and I did. Yes, she was very young. But she was not fourteen. She was nineteen, you, however. That's the difference between now, but culturally, and we look upon these things as no. I know. No, but I'm talking about eighteen. The eighteen year old. No, I understand. That's the one I throw I out. I understand. Right? Now. Because, I, I mean, I could have dated an 18-year-old to a 32-year-old, and people right. would have said, this is kind of weird. Right. Okay, but it wouldn't have been immoral or illegal. Right, right. I don't, right. I don't deny so. that. I don't deny that. But this, a 14-year-old is a different category. That's a whole different category. So. Yes, it is. But, but that 14-year-old that is a different category was not necessarily true even in this country 100 years ago. It's, true. Yeah. true. Uh, 1979, worth, I think. This is worth yeah. mentioning. Yeah. Yes, I, it is. I, so. I have deep southern roots. Yeah. Uh, in some of my subculture, this would not have been all that unusual. Same thing in my family. 50 years ago, 100 years ago, would not have been yeah. even blinked at yep. in some yeah. ways. And so it is a changing environment. Of course, we also are working with this recent Hollywood set of scandals. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so that provides a little bit more credence, right. I think, to this. Now, it doesn't mean it's more accurate, but people take it more seriously, yeah. I think, because the environment yeah. in which we find ourselves. And I wonder whether that's what motivated the initial reporting. Yeah. I just don't know. No, yeah. I think it's very possible. I, I'm yeah. skeptical of that. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I think it's clear doing a background piece on him gathering sure. all these women. Yeah. It's clearly political. That doesn't mean just because it's no. political in my mind right. that we wrong. shouldn't give it credit. Right. Right. If it's true, yeah. then it's, it's yeah. just right. something we should be aware of and sure. consider. And the big thing I want to make sure we avoid, not just as us, mm -hmm. but as Christians in general, is we don't play a double standard. We don't yeah. say, well, since it's Roy Moore, we'll excuse it. If it's uh, yeah. Bill Clinton, we're going to attack him. Right. I, let's make sure whatever we decide that we're consistent, that we apply it to all candidates, all parties. Yeah. Let's try to be straightforward and principled about this. Yeah, it isn't always easy to do, but I think that's our goal. Worthy of condemnation on both counts yeah. if they're, if they're guil if actually guilty. If there's truth to it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about uh, taxes. Taxes, taxes, taxes. The topic that won't go away, it seems like. Yeah, uh, be with us for quite a while. Um, Jeff, do you care to give us an update? Where are we at right now in the whole tax process? Well, let's sure, start there. Sure. Yeah. Well, the Senate uh, has kind of put forward the broad outlines of what their bill would look like. And, and while we have no idea what is actually going to be the end result, of course, the House has got to pass theirs. The Senate will have to pass theirs. Yep. They'll go to a committee, yep. conference, and, and yep. something will yep. come out of that. But, but it's interesting, with the Senate right. bill that, that came out, we can start to see where are the, the similarities with the House such that there's likelihood yeah. of some things. And, yep. and just if you look at, and I wrote some of the notes down, of what, what is common between the two. A corporate tax rate going down to 20% is in both bills, mm -hmm. House in, in uh, 18, whereas Senate in 19. But so it sounds like yeah. we're going to get a corporate tax rate, and yeah. it's going to be what Mr. Very Trump important. wanted. Yeah. And yes. that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, the state and local tax deduction uh, being eliminated, that's in both bills now. The House does keep a... Uh, mm -hmm. A ten thousand uh, dollar property tax uh, allowance, okay. but but that being said, so the high tax states, uh, you are at risk. Yeah, I true. mean, in, in this, yeah. so we're but states states give those exemptions too, quite quite generously in some yeah. states. So. so so that's part of it. The standard deduction is in both cases is going to be doubled uh, as as we look at the rates. So that that's that's the basis with which the the Trump administration, the Repub Republicans, will say that. Everybody's getting tax cut is, is because of the, sure. uh, the increase in the standard deduction. Uh, we had a little bit of discussion here locally. I know a lot of people were uh, kind of very upset over the yeah. House bill initially having the adoption credit deleted. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, from what I read earlier today, uh, they, the House Ways and Means appended that, so yeah. it's back in, and the Senate bill did not have it. So it looks like the adoption tax credit survives. Mm -hmm. That will not be a part of this bill. Now, where, what are the things that are up for grabs? So that we yeah. still see negotiable. Well, the uh, House version has four brackets, but the Senate version still keeps seven. Mm. Uh, the top rate, the Senate version is a little bit lower, 38.5 versus mm. 39.6. So that's huh. all negotiable. A difference in the, the pass-through rates that would go from individual uh, uh, taxes for a business, uh, that's a little bit different rate. Some of the deductions, medical ex expenses, student loan expenses. So those are all things yeah. that we're, we're seeing that are still going to be part of the negotiation process. Who knows where it will end? 
uh, I, I think we've already got some clear uh, winners and losers, though. The, the winners, corporations and small businesses, are going to win from this tax uh, bill. Yeah. And I would assert, and the Republicans are going to assert, and I would as an economist, too, that this is going to be very good for workers mm -hmm. because this is going to spur additional investment. Mm -hmm. So we should expect to see a, a more growing economy downstream. The losers, well, there's one clear loser, the high-tax states, California, New York, Illinois, yeah. where the, they yeah. will no longer get those those expensive deductions. So those yeah. are some of the things we're seeing in the tax bill. Uh, more to be come, but I, I would expect we're going to see pretty much all of these common ground items be in yeah. a final bill. That <coughs> Let, do you mind? Let's yeah. talk yeah. about the sure. adoption credit just mm -hmm. for a minute, just at a, more of a theoretical level. Sure. I think all we're all pro-life. We all value adoption. We all want um, more adoptions, <coughs> less abortions. I mean, we would all fit into those categories, mm -hmm. I think, pretty easily. Uh, and I think we'd all recognize that the adoption credit probably plays a role. Sure. Allowing mm -hmm. more people to Sounds carry out adoptions, which is consistent with pro-life policy. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and if you looked at the news recently, you saw a fair number of conservatives <coughs> speak out very boldly and directly mm -hmm. about maintaining this kind of credit in place. However, <laughs> and you knew it was coming, it's however, worthy. can you make the argument that it should be scrapped regardless of kind of the moral consequences or potential moral sure, consequences? Sure. Um, you know, David mm -hmm. French wrote recently that essentially if the Republicans don't save the adoption credit, we should just fold up shop and be done with the party. So that's really what it means to be pro-life. So, sure. I mean, Jeff, as an economist, I mean, mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you look at these kinds of um, carve-outs, let's say, sure. to benefit and create certain kind of behavioral incentives? Yeah. Well, I'm not in favor of any of these carve-outs, right. any I of them. I knew he was going to say that. However, yeah. uh, let, let's think about it. If we're going to have carve-outs, yeah. this is probably a lot a better, better carve-out sure. for, for the reasons he makes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but it would be better served for us not to have any of these exemptions, and then we shouldn't be just yet another pig at the trough asking for right. our particular benefit. <laughs> there is no reason why we as Christians through our churches cannot uh, do this same thing to help people mm -hmm. meet yeah. adoption expenses. And, and I know in my own local church, we've talked about that. Do we want to have some sort of special fund within our church. And I guarantee if this were, were to go through and yeah. be, the church would step up. It's not like we're, we're not going to want to promote adoption. Right. It, it's not clear to me at all. The only way that we can support our values is through the federal government. So yeah. I, I'm not convinced right. at all. Uh, that said, I am sympathetic. If they're, if they're having carve-outs for some, yeah. why would this be the one we'd sacrifice yeah. when this is so good? So I, yeah, I, yeah, I resonate yeah. with that. Yeah, Mark, yeah. what do you think? I, I agree with that. I, I would like to see all the carve-outs eliminated. Special interest... Mm -hmm deductions and exemptions, lower the rates overall yeah, for yeah, everyone, yeah. Uh, which would help everyone, uh, all individuals, and at the same time, we wouldn't be granting special interest carve-outs for people, yeah. which, uh, yeah, distorts the whole, the whole thing. Yeah, and one of the points of hypocrisy that's being raised is, you know, these Republicans are going to take away the adoption credit and still fund Planned Parenthood. That was sort of the... <laughs> well, and again, what there's, what the argument is, is they're both special... Sure. Um, creations within the tax structure that maybe we should get rid of all of them and yeah. not just sort of pick and choose. Yeah. So, I do agree with that. Uh, it's a tough argument to make, though, politically. Oh, very We all know this much. tax, this whole overhaul process is an enormous political minefield, and so yeah. we're going to continue to see these sorts of issues. And, and, and why yeah. they got there, this is kind of important to note, too. They've got there because precisely they're unwilling to deal with spending, which has been your big point. Yeah. Yeah. Such they have very little that. room to maneuver. They've got yeah, to come up right. with some offsets. Exactly. If right. they would be willing to tackle some of the egregious spending, yeah. then they would not have even mentioned this in the first place. Yep. Yeah, that's Absolutely. a good point. True. That's an excellent point. Well, let's move on and talk about trade. President Trump is on an international trip. As you guys know, he's been in Asia the last several days. He's going to continue for quite a while. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been in North Korea, or been in South Korea. I shouldn't say North Korea. That'd be quite a story if he was in North Korea. <laughs> I've been in South Korea, I've uh, been in Japan, China. Um, uh, let's talk about his take on trade in this context. Mm -hmm. uh, so are we really looking at just sort of Trump revisiting campaign themes here? We're sort of still more protectionist, still more threatening of free trade? Or is, yeah. are we seeing some differences in President Trump compared to candidate Trump? Yeah. Well, I, I think what we see in the current trip, yeah. he's giving a different perspective on how we view trade and how we deal with international relations in Asia. Our, our previous history has all been about more integration, and he's going away uh -huh. from that, which is, 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 is troubling in and of itself. Uh, that, that said, th this ne isn't necessarily as bad as some of the other things. I am more personally con concerned right now. I read an article this week that uh, his strategy right now seems to be vis-a-vis -vis NAFTA is right. to simply uh, pull us out of the treaty and that by blowing it up effectively, that'll force negotiation to happen. And, and I believe our uh, economies are so integrated now that would be devastating to the economy. He's making a lot of good decisions on regulation, 
potentially with this on taxes. It's hard to make a case right now with unemployment at 4% that we really we need, need to go blow up the, the free trade, which has been uh, something uh, of, of the genesis of all our growth for the last 300 years. Mark? I, I, can't, I can't decide whether he's, whether he's just signaling he's going to get more serious about this and actually do something, or whether he's just, he just wants to posture and, and threaten people and hope that they will then cave a little bit to some of his ideas. Yeah. Uh, and make trade conditions more favorable to, to the United States. So I can't, this is I can't a statement of principle out. or just negotiation tactic? Yeah, I just can't figure that out yeah. at this point. Yeah. I'm afraid, I, I thought it was just negotiation, but I'm afraid it's, it's really just very, really very poor it. policy. But I'd like to ask your perspective yeah, yeah, sure. uh, from yeah, a yeah. political perspective. Yeah. You know, we need some defense of trade from the Republicans. Can, you know, we just saw, uh, and yeah. I wrote about on the blog, that, yeah. that Mr. Trump got rolled uh, via the EPA not yeah. too long ago. Where are the Republicans? Can we expect to see the Republicans roll him, say, look, if you push on this, we're not going to give you something you want vis-a-vis -vis tax or other things. Uh, because we're, we're hearing a lot of this. This is part of the Mary O'Grady article. Uh, Senator Pat Roberts and others, they're having major concerns over their state interests that would be decimated if trade with NAFTA were eliminated. Yeah. So, so is there a possibility of any politically constraining him? Uh, you can even take this back to the Obama administration, right? I mean, there's mm -hmm. a lot of uh, criticism of President Obama's approach in the Trans-Pacific uh -huh. region, and that wasn't res that wasn't certainly from a free trade mm -hmm. perspective. It's mm -hmm. usually some more of a protectionist point of view. Yeah. The Republicans have not really been vocally uh, protective of free trade. I don't think since the um, since 2008, yeah. since you saw really All the right. economic recession Fish take out. place, we haven't seen them make it a cardinal part of their platform. No. Certainly has not been a focus, wasn't for John McCain, wasn't necessarily for Mitt Romney, although Romney had Got broader it. rhetoric, yeah. I think, on the issue. Mm -hmm. um, so no, I don't know if we can expect to see Republicans mount a robust defense of free trade, which is, which is really, for me, the, yeah. one of the massive departures from the Republican Party yeah. of my youth. I was um, asking a little bit different question, because okay. I don't expect them to publicly do so that. You just but, I, you know, the, in the same way that yeah. the, the, the Iowa senators rolled yeah. very yeah. silently, yeah. could they yeah. privately tell them, look, don't do this. If you don't pull back on this, we're not going to give you other things you want. They could, for sure. But remember, Trump is struggling right now trying to maintain some mm -hmm. sense of ability to do things in Congress and also appease his base, right? Yeah. This is one area where his base is pretty uniform. They're yes. opposed to free trade. They want more protectionism. They want more manufacturing in the United States of yeah. America. Economically, I think those are all yeah. dubious claims to some extent. I think Trump is very sensitive to that, though, when it comes to his potential re-election bid. So I don't, I don't know if yeah. we're going to yeah. see. I don't know if we're going to see the president get pulled in more of a free trade direction, unless it's uh, maybe even unwittingly. I, and I'd yeah. say from the Congress, congressional side, congressmen, I think, feel uh, uh, just a bit uh, constrained right now. Oh, sure. Uh, given the recent, they're scared of the Virginia and. and New Jersey elections, which I'm not as scared as they are, but they're, mm -hmm. they're afraid of it, what might happen. Democrats are gaining confidence and maybe money in the process. And so they may feel that, that really they don't have any bargaining chips. They're sort of in a corner now. Right? So we don't have anything to, to say to Trump. Otherwise, yeah. he may just call our bluff. Yeah. And then we're really in a pickle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just real quick, I want to follow up on one element of this. One of the arguments that we've had about China in particular mm -hmm is that uh, we want to have free trade as much as we can with China because the assumption is free trade will bring more mm -hmm. political freedom to China so that we should favor broad agreements so that we can start to see some cultural change there. Do you mm -hmm. think that's still a... <laughs> is this a, an argument that we still need to be making? And is that one of the reasons we should critique the president here? Or the other side of it, of course, is that more idealist perspective. We have a set of values. The Chinese don't share those values. Therefore, we should be willing to combat them even in the trade arena, because we need to show our political differences with them. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's, there's a time to use trade policy, and there's a time not to. And I, I would not favor using trade policy for a broader political agenda such as that, if it's, if it's possible to avoid that. If it came to a crisis, maybe, of some kind. But in the long run, I think we should pursue free trade with them, hoping that in the long run we'll see more loosening up of, in the political legal arena in China. Um, toler tolerance, toleration arena, um, not knowing for sure whether it's going to happen. Yeah, right. We'd never know for right, sure. Yeah, yeah. But in the meantime, I think it's a generally good thing to have yeah. a free trade. It's not, and if they're not going to be affected one way or the other, then I, I don't see any reason to, to withdraw our, our trade policy if it's a good trade policy with them that we've had already. 
Uh, again, unless I think we're talking really major issues, crises like a war, for example, right. mm -hmm. would we actually use our trade policy in some in some way, uh, like like maybe Trump kind of signal, signaling he wants to use it. Yeah, that's that's my take on it anyway. Jeff, what do you think? Well, I mean, it, right now we've just had this very very um, nationalistic uh, speech by the uh, president yeah. of China, basically saying he's pulling back and going to embrace the communist kind of regime and, and uh, there's a lot of restrictions on freedom. So I think it's a little bit premature to know whether that's actually gonna be carried through. Yeah. I, I think where, where you have economic integration, it, it's, it's harder to do that. Yep. But yes. clearly what he's trying to do, he's saying it's not impossible, he's gonna go that direction. So I think it's in our interest to continue to have those ec economic ties. Uh, if nothing else, uh, it, it helps to, to further the, the goodwill of the people that would be there whether they can use right. that to resist or right. not, yeah. to say, well, well, if, 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 uh, if I have a relationship, because remember, free trade is not between countries. Free yeah, trade is right. between individuals yeah, right. within countries in allowed trade. So there are Chinese citizens that are able to trade with a manufacturer, and they realize that they're no longer going to be able to do so. That hurts yeah. their bottom line, yeah. sure. and they may be able to use some of that to resist the, the government. I, I yeah, I, we don't conduct our foreign policy just for what's good for us, obviously, yeah. but free trade is also good for us and for our yeah, citizens. It's, for it's a good and in so, itself. Yeah, we have, to, we have to defend it on those grounds to some extent yeah. as well. So, yeah. Well, thanks, gentlemen. Appreciate it. It's always fun. Uh, thanks to our uh, watchers. Hopefully you guys will, if you have questions, certainly uh, give them in our comments and we will try to address them next time. So we will talk to you later.